Hello and welcome to Anton Math. Now we've talked about uh, different set operations in previous videos and in these next couple of videos I'm going to talk about a couple of uh, more advanced set operations that we use. Uh, the first one and the one that, that I'm going to focus on in this video is called the symmetric difference. I'll go ahead and write that out. Symmetric difference. Now usually when we think of a difference, we think of subtraction, and in a certain sense there is some subtraction going on here, but actually how we denote this is if I have two sets A and B, I'm going to write the symmetric difference as A plus B. Right? So this plus sign does not mean addition. This plus sign is a binary operation which we define to be the symmetric difference between these sets. Now. I can define the symmetric difference here in set notation. This is going to be all of the elements x such that x is in A or x is in B Oops. or x is in B and I need an additional constraint here and x is not an element of the intersection of A and B. Now we could write this another way. I could also just write this as A union B. Right? A union B is all of the elements that satisfy this first proposition. And I'm going to take out all the elements that violate this proposition. So in other words, I'm going to subtract out A intersection B. All right, so this is an equivalent way to write the symmetric difference. I'm taking the union of two sets, but then I'm taking out the intersection of those sets, or any elements that those two sets have in common. Right? Now, with this um, written over here, we can use all of the laws that we've used, all the properties of sets, to actually find a very neat property of the symmetric difference. So notice that A plus B, or the symmetric difference between A and B, this is going to be equal to A union B, and I'm going to take out A intersection B. Now this difference here that we learned about before, remember we could also write this as A union B. Now instead of subtracting out the intersection, um, this is going to be the same thing as the intersection of A intersection B complement. Right, so I'm saying the same thing here, right? I'm saying it's in A union B and it's not in A intersection B, right? Or it is in A intersection B complement. Now by De Morgan's laws, I can distribute this complement. This becomes A union B intersection. And remember when we distribute a complement through an intersection, each um, set becomes a complement of itself, but the intersection changes into a union, right? If you don't remember this, you can go back and uh, review the properties of set operations. This one was called De Morgan's Law. So this would be A complement, union, B complement. Okay, now I can go ahead and switch these over. I'm going to write these in a different order. I'm going to put this, this one first. This is A complement, union, B complement intersected with. Now I could also write A union B, let me go ahead and do this on the side, I can write A union B as A complement, intersection B complement, the whole thing complement. Right? I know that because when I distribute this big complement through, A complement becomes A, B complement becomes B, and the intersection becomes a union. So I'm going to make this substitution over here for A union B. So this is going to be A intersection, or A complement, sorry, intersected with B complement. The whole thing complement. Right? Now what have we done here? What, what's this whole point? Well, if this is complement, this is the same thing as writing A complement union B complement and then taking out the intersection 
A complement intersected with B complement, right? I'm going the opposite direction of the step that I did up here. Remember, this difference is the same thing as this intersection. So I'm taking this intersection, it's going to be the same thing as this difference. Well, what is this equal to? This is the symmetric difference between A complement and B complement. So a very interesting property, the symmetric difference between two sets A and B is equal to the symmetric difference of their complements. Right? Now this should make sense. This means all of the elements that are in A or B, but not in the intersection. This means all of the elements that are not in A or not in B, and not in the intersection of these complements. Right? You can go ahead and think about this for yourself. Uh, this makes sense why these two would be equal, but it's a very interesting property to see written down and to see why. Now we have a couple of laws as well with a symmetric difference. Uh, we have a commutative law. Right, with the definition that we have, commutative law makes sense here. So the symmetric difference between A and B is going to be equal to the symmetric difference between B and A. Right, both of these are just um, all of the elements that are in either A or B, but not in both. So it doesn't really matter what order we consider the sets themselves. And we also have an associative law. Right? That associative law is that the symmetric difference between A and the symmetric difference B and C is equal to the symmetric difference between A and B, taking the symmetric difference of that with C. Right? We can do the symmetric difference in any order, um, and in fact, this is going to be the same thing as, you know, we could just kind of write A symmetric difference with B symmetric difference with C. Uh, this is going to be all of the elements that are in uh, some of the, or in one of these sets, but it's not in the intersection of any of the sets. Okay. All right, that's symmetric difference. Uh, in the next video, and, and we don't use this much in the class, but I wanted to, uh, to go over this so that everybody knows what it is when they see it. Uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about something we've been using quite a bit in class, and that's the cross product or Cartesian product of two different sets, and we'll see you there.